Good evening, I'm Bob Alvarez. We all remember that first kiss, that first love, the birth of our first child. Tonight, Rays fans hoping to remember the first to 20 wins this season. Rays sitting at 19 and 10, bases loaded for Sean Rodriguez, and he rips one through the left side. It's 2-0 Rays. Hey, call it coincidence, Rodriguez cut his hair a few days ago. Now he's hitting the ball much better. Base is still loaded for Matt Joyce. A liner to right. Two more Rays will score. Four nothing Rays over the A's. Pitcher Matt Moore is struggling this season. He won't even turn around to see where this ball's going. That's a three-run homer for Brandon Inge, and the A's lead 5-4. You want to see a big league play by a big league guy, Sean Rodriguez, going all out. Show it to you one more time. Bad part is Rays lose 9-5. They are still looking for that 20th win. Their next shot is Tuesday in New York. The Boston Red Sox on a four-game skid. And it's the Orioles hoping to make it five in a row. Top one, J.J. Hardy. High, deep, <laughs> gone. One, nothing Orioles. Top of the third, J.J. Hardy. High, deep, come on everybody, <laughs> gone. 5-0 Orioles. Here's a good story for you. Boston's Will Middlebrooks has never homered to the big leagues. Bases loaded, high, deep, woo-hoo, gone. And you know what? These fans heard that story. They're thinking, hey, we get this ball. Might be worth a jersey, a bat, some moolah. Who knows? This game went 17 innings. They used more pitchers than Joe's tap on a Friday night. That's outfielder Daryl McDonald. And Adam Jones says, you're no pitcher. 3-1 homer makes it 9-6. The Orioles had to use first baseman Chris Davis to throw a couple of innings. There he is. Hey, Orioles won this one in 17 innings, 9-6. Well, have you heard the story about the guy who didn't shower before the game? Well, in Kansas City, this fan caught an early ride to the ball game with his buddies. So, so yeah, he didn't have time to shower. So he decides to go for a dip. He's got ball. And probably smells a little better right now, but he's not going to be around for the seventh inning stretch. Officials said, hey, son, it's an early day for you. By the way, Yankees won the game 10-3. The Knicks are feeling the heat in more ways than one. They've lost 13 straight playoff games, and they trail 3-1 to one in this series. Defense wins championships. You've heard that one before. Dwayne Wade, four steals, and it's jam time. 22 for Wade, heat up by 11. I've never dislocated a kneecap. I never want to dislocate a kneecap. Baron Davis dislocates his kneecap. But without him, the Knicks hung in there. They were up by three, but then guess what? LeBron James squares up. He hits the three. Pointer, game tied at 84. LeBron with 27. Carmelo feeling the heat because he's hot, my friends. Three pointer, Carmelo with 41. Knicks win this game 89 87, a 13 game playoff losing streak. Done. My team, the Bulls, what's going on? Yeah, you know, too many injuries. Bulls lose to the Sixers 89 82. Sixers lead this series three games to one. Boston Celtics looking to go up three to one on the Hawks. Ray Jean Rondo. Kevin Garnett, jam time. Rondo, 16 assists. He also had 20 points. There's two of them right there and one elbow to the jaw. Paul Pierce, 24 points. Three pointer. Celtics up by as many as 37. Nice move by Rondo there. Celtics win 101-79. Well, last night we showed you the spinning in the nationwide series at Talladega. Would it be anything different? 48 laps to go. More spinning. This reminds me of the morning after my brother's bachelor party. But that's a story for another time. Pole sitter Jeff Gordon done as are Martin Truex Jr. and Carl Edwards. Five laps to go on a restart. More wreckage. Points leader Greg Biffle is done. Defending series champ Tony Stewart done. Through it all, Brad Kozolowski takes the checkered flag for his second win of the season. Wish I had the hair. Ricky Fowler wears orange because he went to Oklahoma State. Glad he didn't attend Austin Peay. 
On the 18th, Fowler, 14 under, Rory McIlroy. On number 18, for the win, rolling, rolling, rolling. Well, now he's going to go to the playoff. First playoff hole, Fowler. If he hits the birdie, he's got it. Boom, there it is, his first PGA victory. Congratulations. That's a look at sports. I, Bob Alvarez, have a nice night. We'll see you tomorrow. When John is on the bench watching a game, he'll see problems. I mean, after all, these things are going to happen. He says the challenge is how quickly can you correct what went wrong? There's a gentleman here at One Buck Place who has survived two owners, four different head coaches, and more sour Sundays than he cares to remember. It's no surprise his heart is as big as a football field. Shockingly, his appetite is much smaller. Who's my second favorite NFL team? <laughs> Sad to say, the guys who were shut out here not long ago. I grew up in Chicago, so yes. Countdown to kickoff. You know, just when I was getting the hang of this tailback and fullback stuff, Les Steckel decides to throw at us the H-back. I'm a little confused. Doug Graber, can you help me out here? The H-back is. <laughs> hey, Doug, I think I'm going to need some private tutoring here, but uh, we'll talk about it right, later. We can, we can handle it. <laughs> Well, Fox 13 sports reporter Bob Alvarez has found one local golfer whose routine is truly unique. For 20 years, John Moore has been working on his game, but he's never made a putt. You'll see why. It is common for a guy to pop the trunk, grab his clubs, put on his glove, and work on his game. What is unusual for John Moore is this, his own personal practice range that you wouldn't exactly call country clubbing. Location, location, nah, eh, not real good. Distractions, the occasional pedestrian, noise, cars, trucks, mowers, turf, a bit sandy. A month and a half ago, I thought I was in the Sahara Desert. Man, I'm a dusty, brown. <laughs> man, get out of here, man. Hit the ball, dust all my... These are not the azaleas at Augusta National, and this is not the backdrop at Pebble Beach. But it is where this native Tampan works on his game every day. And I try to keep the same thing in my head, do the same thing, same thing, you know, you know, pet that down. Ah, uh, no, no. After way too many years as a longshoreman, this 67-year-old retired three years ago. A friend gave him a golf club, and John began teaching himself. Occasionally, his neighbor puts in his two cents worth. He's talking some things. And I was swinging a club. No, 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 no. Oh, I was digging a hole, man. <laughs> As you drive by, you'll notice practice habits that are routine. John hits the balls. He finds them when the grass isn't too high. Then he attempts to get near his stick again. Down. Huh, how about that, huh? Come back here. With all this noise, this is certainly a less than ideal place to be concentrating on your golf game, but it's all that John knows. He has never played on a golf course. What's he waiting for? It's something I had to improve for me to go. You can't do this once a week. You got it all the time. Stay sharp, you know? Bob Alvarez, Fox 13 Sports. <laughs> and John actually is going to get his first taste of what a real course is all about. Someone saw his story, heard about it, right. and uh, donated 10 rounds of golf at Rogers Park for him and a friend. So. Oh, that's but the Oakles also the focus that Fox 13 Sports reporter Bob Alvarez finds in a skills camp in Pinellas County. There we go. 15 minutes into their workout, the 2 p.m. sun is blazing. I'm thinking, who? Either these kids are nuts or dedicated. It's tough. It's a, it's, it's, it's tough. It's, it's real hot, but at the same time, it's, it, it makes you work harder. Red, go! One, let's go, three. Get up, come on. Back to one. Andre go. Hudson two. is a personal quick. trainer. Quick. Get up. The trainees are a group okay. of mostly high school one, kids down. who participate in everything from football to track. An invitation to these workouts requires a B average in the classroom and the dedication to jump ahead. 
Uh, helped me a lot with my training for long jump and track and stuff, getting in shape, endurance-wise and everything. It's just we work harder, so the results will come out better. Basically, I'm going to make him a better athlete. I'm going to make him a faster athlete. I'm going to make him a quicker athlete, uh, more endurance. All right, so everything we do definitely is set up week for week to advance and get a little tougher. There are cones. Hmm. No ice cream, though. But plenty of fruit and drinks made possible by a company that reinforces positive values. Those, those things that we learn from sports, the values of teamwork and dedication and determination and commitment and um, camaraderie, all those things that we think are really, really important for kids to, uh, to learn as they grow up. These positive steps cost these athletes nothing, nada, zilch. It's free. While the kids are here free, didn't somebody say that in life there was no such thing as a free lunch? Yes, yes. There is a trade-off for these athletes. You got to give something back, okay? Community service, eight hours. Each individual out here, most of them have done it. Uh, the community service is, um, we did car washes. So we uh, picked up trash at uh, St. Pete Beach. Getting involved with the community is another thing. And as a volunteer, it shows the community, that, hey, I'm not just a student in, in school as an athlete. In three weeks, this camp will end. They will be better athletes and better people. Bob Alvarez, Fox 13 Sports. And our Bob Alvarez has the story of a local 18-year-old looking for Olympic gold. Rhythm, determination, humility. My friends, they always just like, man, you box this, that. I just say it's what I do. And that's the way that I look at it. Putting the gloves on 11 years ago did not happen because a seven-year-old kid had a mean streak on the streets. Played football. It's not the same when it's me versus them, one-on-one, -on -one, their ability versus my ability. It's a whole nother story. Over the years, thousands of fighters have climbed into the ring with the physical skills. However, in the end, the champions, the guy that gets the hand raise, is often the fighter who's tougher right here. I feel like my mental approach, it's a little... A little slightest here and there. If it wasn't my goal, I wouldn't be here wasting my time. I mean, this is my dream. I want to be at the Olympics representing my country, the USA, and do the best that I possibly can do. The Olympics are next summer in China. Thurman will punch his ticket for Beijing if he wins the Olympic trials in late August. His chances are pretty good. He's already beaten the three guys he'll fight. Keith Thurman is thirsty for this opportunity and much, much more turning pro and hopefully one day to be a world champion and being on pay-per-view and be a tremendous exciting fighter. Bob Alvarez, Fox 13 Sports. USF's Lalo Prado is one of those hometown stories. He's coaching at USF, but as our Bob Alvarez tells us, his passion for the sport heats up in July when the kids come to camp. Oh, to be a kid again. No work, no mortgage, just... Baseball. 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 Think about it. This is the life. Running the bases, being with your friends, just baseball and your dreams. My first thing I want to accomplish is winning the World, Lowly World Series and then going to Mayweather. The big leagues is a very big step. Positive reinforcement is a key, so is having the skills. They start with the game's basics. I believe you got to be able to bunt. you got to be able to do the little things right. And if you do the little things right, the big things take care of themselves. And uh, it's always been good for me, and I'll continue to teach that way. Instruction is everywhere at the USF baseball camp. Around me, around me. These 8- to 12-year-olds are learning about fielding, running the bases, and hitting, which they can't get enough of. I like hitting. Are you a good hitter? Yeah, pretty good hitter. Home run hitter? No, not really. Singles hitter? Line drive hitter. This guy wants me to hit it harder, so uh, here we go. You ready? Here we go. And there we go. Nice. Good throw. Woo! I might have beat that one out. The moms didn't pack the peanuts or Cracker Jacks, but lunch, hey, it just gets in the way of baseball. And I like the batting, and I like to run around the bases because I like to run a lot. Throwing it first. When Lelo was finished teaching these kids, 
his focus returns to his baseball team. Last season, his first with the Bulls, they won 34 games. Jump on while there's still room on the bandwagon. It's going to be a lot of fun out there at USF because we're going to build something special. We're going to get a new stadium, and good things are going to happen out there, and hopefully one day uh, win a national championship for USF. Bob Alvarez, Fox 13 Sports. Have you ever thought about how you would make the call? How would you handle your chance to make history? Our Bob Alvarez has an idea. Soon, Barry Bonds will swing into the record book. We have a good idea what it will look like, but how will it sound? Barry Bonds needs one more home run to win the home run record. Here comes Barry Bonds into the batter's box. Barry Bonds at the plate. Here comes the pitch. Here's the pitch by Downing. For decades, announcers, uh, the professional kind, have made great moments memorable. Gibson swings and a fly ball to deep right field. This is going to be a home run. Unbelievable. So now I'm wondering, the professional announcers, they, they sound so good when they do this. Do they stay up all night rehearsing these moments? I think if you try to script something, it becomes a little contrived and artificial, and nine times out of ten, you're going to mess it up anyway. So just let it happen the way it happens. That said, if we had the mic in our hands, how would we say it happened when it happens? Here comes the pitch. Here comes the swing. He hits it. It's over the right field wall. Home run. He breaks the home run record. See ya. Number 756 for Barry Bonds. Well, everybody else had their shot, so uh, here we go. Bonds steps to the plate. He digs in. Here's the pitch. He swings. It's high. It's deep. <laughs> Barry Bonds, home run. <laughs> Bob Alvarez, Fox 13 Sports. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know. The Giants should hire Bobby I as, think a, so. as their play-by-play -play guy just for that one, <laughs> just for that just one call. For that right. one little call, yeah. All right. Oh, Thanks, well. Okay. That's why, as Bob Alvarez tells us, the Bucks teamed up with USF to make sure high school coaches got a summer education. Tampa 91, Brooksville 91. Paul Delegato tells us how hot it will be. This conference told us how to avoid getting beat by the heat. Area coaches listen to a message that all of us need to hear. But just activity in general outside in Florida, you know, it can have catastrophic results and, and rarely does, but it does happen. And, you know, that's kind of why we're here to, to make people aware that it does and that you can take basic steps to prevent it. The experts say that if you wait until you're thirsty to start drinking, that the game is over. You are already dehydrated. Preventing dehydration is simple. Drink plenty of water. Whether you're going for a run or working in the garden, drink lots of water before, during, and after. If you don't, there will be consequences. Then the best thing you can do is know how to deal with them. Uh, in heat stroke, it seems that the sooner you get them cooled, the sooner you get ice on them, the sooner they get IVs and cold fluids and those kinds of things, probably the better their chance of survival. Another school year means more kids playing sports. Parents, don't let your child get beat by the heat. Here's one thing you need to do. For kids, it's just have a good physical, you know, before before you participate in sports. Know what your medical condition is. I mean, that can, that can play a big part how fit you are going into your season and, and things like that. Bob Alvarez, Fox 13 Sports. Well, Rich, if you see me dancing around, that's because there's a bee flying around here, and uh, this, this could get ugly. Anyway, well, Rich, there's a rookie here that has drawn the praise praise of Mike Ditka, and you will meet him when we uh, come back to lacrosse uh, tonight at 10. We better get out of here, Rich. <laughs> well, Mike, I hope you've studied. Uh, we are an hour and a half away from dropping the puck on the brass inaugural season. And yeah, you know, we're going to take you to hockey school, Alvarez University Hockey 101. We have a quiz, and it's not a real tough one. It goes like this. What is a Zamboni? What's with the flipping? Well, uh, when you and Owen Tulane play on the same night, I never know which team to start the sports cast with, so we're going to flip and we heads, UNO. All right.
So we start with the privateers. Another good reason they have a 20 game home win streak. Tonight they beat La Tech 63 to 58. Privateers up by 15 at the half. Sean Long, three pointer. He scores 13 in tonight's win. First look at the Saints new uniforms. Can we get a drum roll for this? Who said I was Ringo Starr? You may have to strain to see the changes. Now, this is something we had fun with last year, so we are bringing it back. It's your opportunity to call play-by-play -play of a Saints game, and it goes like this. Second down and nine from the 18. Five, and you always come first in this thing we do every Wednesday. We call it Bob's Big Fish Stories. In early October, Jim Smith caught this. is a big night in the NBA. Yeah, I'm excited. This is a good time of year. Two of the favorites have taken a one game to none lead, and we look at how they did it with our NBC friends. It's playoff time in the NBA. Who's going? Uh, listen, I got a double check for tickets tonight. Who, who got what? On the floor, eight teams, one objective. We cannot let them win. It's us versus them. Baseball and LSU. Yeah, batter up. Mm -hmm. And I've got the first pitch right here. Brother Martin's David Miller and Rummel High School's Tim Nugent battled on the mound tonight. Nugent would record the first save of his collegiate career. Miller had a rough start. We're going to pick it up for you. Bottom of the first, facing Eddie Furness. That can always be trouble, and it is now. Furness, hee-hee, <laughs> two-nothing. During this, the Buccaneers' 25th season, the expectations have never been higher. The certainty is that each week it's going to be a battle for the Buccaneers, and the intensity of this mano a mano combat has been both football's attraction and subtraction. I think it's always been a serious issue, but I think recently the, the main issue is the, the, the effect of repeated mild concussions, you know, your bell rung, so to speak. I mean, that, that's really the big issue. What's the cumulative effect of that? To keep its players playing, the NFL has, over time, updated its rules and modified the equipment. But in keeping pace with the increasing brutality on the field, the combatants feel one change has been long overdue. It's the first new helmet design in about 25 years, and we knew that with the 25-year-old design, we could do something better, and so it's a step in the right direction. Trace Armstrong's interest in auto racing fueled the creation of this new helmet. Its advantages? Well, it's lighter. In fact, it's two pounds lighter. And on top, there are a series of holes which provide better ventilation. Inside, this new helmet conforms much better to the player's individual head size, and thus far, this helmet has withstood some of the game's most violent collisions. We were playing Miami in the preseason, and an interception was thrown, and my own center came back, peeled back, and hit me, knocked me out cold, knocked the helmet off and everything. But it's a pretty good helmet, because had it been the other helmet with the weight and the collision and everything, I'd probably suffered a concussion, but I didn't. Buccaneers George Hegeman, Warren Sapp, and Steve White are among the players in the NFL touting the benefits of keeping their heads in the game. Later in the game, when guys are tired, they, they don't start lowering their head to make tackles or to block. I mean, so far it's been great. I mean, I, I've been able to move around. I've been protected. I've taken, you know, full contact hits and haven't been affected at all. And at the end of practice, I'm still holding my head high. When you carry around as much weight as I do naturally, you like to, you know, decrease all the extra weight. And uh, it's a pretty light helmet. It looks big, but it's a lot lighter. You'd think the player's endorsement of this new helmet would send their teammates rushing toward this new technology. Truth is, here on the football field, it's hard to argue with tradition. I'm just used to the one I've, I've had. I've been wearing it ever since I've been here, and it hasn't done me wrong, so why change anything that's not broken? Another reason for the player's skepticism is the liability issue, meaning the Players Association, not the league, is involved with the creator of this helmet, Bike. Therefore, the league assumes little, if any, liability should a player become seriously injured while wearing this newly created headgear. For Verizon Wireless Buccaneer Diaries, I'm Bob Alvarez. Would anyone mind telling me what everyone is staring at? Hey, guys, move over. Hey, you know, hey, you mind if I sneak in here and get a peek? So I think it's done very tastefully. Athletic bodies are very good looking. I really don't care to see the whole thing. The mixed reaction is to life's photographic celebration of the Olympic body, a 14-page layout the magazine describes as the beauty inherent in the original Olympic ideal of the naked competitor. 
A pretty fancy way of saying. It's a different way of looking at the athletes, isn't it? 17 Olympians pose for what the magazine calls naked power, amazing grace. Seems like they were half right. Mark Henry, the Olympic weightlifter, what do you think? He need clothes on. <laughs> the two mermaids, what do you think? It's not graphic, it's not, you know, erotic or anything like that. Life magazine writes that you and I inside one of these bodies would compare to a visit to a different land. I say, road trip. Would this journey lead me to survive the 3% body fat of Carl Lewis? Could I maintain the lung power of the water polo team? I can 